Let's close the loop on the popular personal radio service categories with a quick look at the Radioddity CS47 Citizens Band Radio. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we're going to focus on a new offering from Radioddity. I need to let you know that they supply the radio for this review, but have no input to the review itself. You'll get my honest opinion. Contrary to popular opinion, CB radio did not die in the 1970s after the movie Smokey and the Bandit and the popular song Convoy by C.W. McCall. While CB radios aren't nearly as popular as then, a CB radio is frequently found in big rigs and the cars of other road warriors. The emergency channel and general calling channel are still home to road reports including speed traps, accidents, and road conditions. In September of 2021, the FCC authorized the use of FM signals for CB radio, which was a big departure from the AM and single sideband transmissions going back for many years. Speaking of transmissions, the big difference between CB and GMRS or FRS radios is that CB radios transmit in the high frequency or HF band, not the ultra high frequency or UHF band. That means CB channels are on frequencies in the low 27 megahertz range versus GMRS's channels in the 462 megahertz range. You may hear folks referring to the 11 meter band when talking about CB. That's because the wavelength of a CB transmission is about 11 meters from peak to peak as opposed to about 69 centimeters for a GMRS transmission. That difference means a quarter wave CB antenna needs to be either physically or electrically about 102 inches long. Today, most CB antennas use loading coils to allow for shorter antennas than the long whips you may have remembered from the past. Last, before we take a look at the CS47, a couple of other background notes. First, CB radios are limited to 4 watts, whether in AM or FM mode. Single sideband radios can use up to 12 watts. Next, like other radios in the personal radio service category, CB radios are channelized. There are 40 CB channels and you are not allowed to input random frequencies into FCC certified radios. Last, the CS47 has a number of functions that I simply don't remember from my small CB radio back in the day. These include microphone mounted controls, active noise canceling, CTCSS and DCS codes to limit what breaks the squelch on your radio, along with adjustable mic gain, RF gain, and scanning. Let's take a look at what you'll get with your CS47. So here's the box that the uh, CS47 from Radiati comes in. As you can see, it's not much bigger than my hand. It's a small little radio, so it comes in a small little box. Let's take a peek at what's inside. The first thing we'll look at is the instruction manual, and it's really more of a pamphlet. It's really a pretty simple radio to operate, but the manual includes diagrams of the mic and all the controls, how to access the controls, and what they do along with a brief description of some of the items here in the menu system that we'll look at in a few minutes. The radio comes with just a couple of accessories. First, there's this little small mounting bracket that you can use to put it up underneath a, a shelf if you're going to use it as a base station or connect it uh, firmly in your vehicle. And then this little plastic bag comes with a microphone clip, a couple of knobs to 
mount the radio to the bracket, as well as some mounting uh, screws and a fuse to complete the installation process. As you can see, the radio itself is pretty small. It's one of those things that you can stash just about anywhere in your vehicle, and if you have it inside, it'll take up almost no room on your desk. Let's take a quick peek. It's metal. It's got the uh, heat sink kind of top to it with additional heat sink fins here on the back. On this side, you can see that it's got a, a hole or a socket for the mounting screw. The bottom has the speaker, a mounting screw over here, and then on the front, there's really nothing except for um, uh, the clip for the microphone attachment. So really not a lot to this. The other thing you'll notice is that the radio comes with wires that have bare ends, which means that you have a variety of mounting techniques that you can use that best suit your purposes. The positive line has got a fuse in it, and so the radio uh, doesn't amount to too much. It's quite capable, but it's very small. Now the heart of the radio is the microphone. So here's the plug that uh, plugs into the radio. It's a, a reasonably long cord uh, for you to reach to the radio, depending upon where you choose to mount the thing. Uh, and then the radio controls themselves are here on the microphone head. Now this feels pretty uh, solid. It's obviously plastic, but it has a nice feel. It's got a little indentation, so it's easier to grip. On the front is a screen that shows you what's happening with the radio, what status it's in. Uh, across the top, there are three buttons. The AF or lock button allows you to choose between AM and FM. The SO or ASO has to do with setting your squelch level. Uh, the EMG and F key here uh, have to do with, uh, uh, you know, a quick rotation from the channel you're on. A quick press puts you into the emergency frequency, uh, channel 9 on CB. Another press will take you up to the road channel, channel 19. And a third will take you back to the frequency you're on. We'll take a peek at that here with the power on in just a minute. A long press will enter you into the menu mode, which will allow you to make some changes to the menu items uh, that are described in the user's manual. On the front here is the volume up and vol volume down. Here is the speaker. And so across the top, we've got three buttons, the channel down, channel up, and then the power switch. So a quick press will turn it on, a long press will turn it off. And then you'll know it's off because the screen goes blank, or you'll know it's on because the screen powers up. So at this point, let me take a couple minutes and put the radio on an antenna and connect it to a power supply, and we'll take a look at what the controls look like when the radio's powered on. Okay, so I've got the radio connected to an antenna here, and I've got it connected to a 12-volt power supply here in the radio shack. So uh, let's take a peek at what this thing does and some of the menus and so forth that you might be interested in. So to turn it on, we're going to press the top button. And it turned on, and on the screen you can see that uh, I've got some, the R&R &R icon is lit, which means receiver noise reduction. At the top, it says it's AM with some uh, radio um, RFI gain set other than the, the off or the default. It's in CB mode and it's on channel 15 and it's got, you know, two bars there. I've got the volume off so we don't have to listen to the hiss uh, behind the channels. And so just a quick review of the buttons here changes from AM to FM mode, so you see it says AM at the top. Now it says FM, so I'd be uh, making an FM broadcast like this. A long press on that key would lock the buttons. Uh, the squelch and uh, button is here, and you can enter the squelch, and you could see that uh, with an up or down, you could change the level of the squelch. Here the EMG button, as I mentioned before, quick press takes it to the emergency channel. Another quick press takes it to the um, uh, road channel, 19. And then a third press takes it back to whatever channel that you started with. The volume controls are here. Uh, I've got it off. We'll roll it up here a little bit so you can hear it. And there's not much coming through, again, with the, the uh, 
noise reduction on, so that's pretty handy. Uh, and then if I wanted to make a channel change, I could go up by pressing this button here. And then, of course, I'd go down pressing this button here. Now, there's not a numeric keypad, so you're going to have to cycle through the channels, but if you hold the buttons down, they cycle through uh, pretty quick. So, uh, those are the, the major controls here on the microphone. Uh, if we want to go into the menu, we do a long press where the little F or function key is right here. And so we've got the color, it's red. We can make a change to the color if we want by changing that. And then we can go up and down here with the buttons. So now I've got it clear, yellow, purple, cyan, blue, green, and then back to red. Press the menu again to make the choice. And then back to the up buttons here. Got a reset, the CTCSS is off. Receiver noise reduction is set at two. Transmitter noise reduction is set at two. Uh, there's a, a high band cutoff. I've got that off. The timeout timer at two minutes. Um, RF9 uh, has to do with the uh, RF gain control. So it's a G, not a nine, and it's set at three. We hold the menu. And then we go back and we start at red again. So we're up to high cutoff, timeout timer, RF gain. These two have to do with the box settings. This is scan. I have it set to time. So if I move, move into scan mode, uh, it'll just uh, spend a couple of seconds wherever it happens to pick up a signal. The other choice is squelch, where if it picks up a carrier, it'll stay. Uh, and so here's the, you know, the primary um, uh, settings here. The beep is on. If you don't like the beep, this is where you turn it off. All of these, again, uh, if you make press the button again when you're in the menu, it get, opens up the choices. Use the buttons on top to change choices. Press the menu again to confirm. And within a second or two, it goes out of the menu mode. So another thing you'd probably be interested in is, in, is scanning. And for scanning for this little radio, we're going to do a long press on the channel button up here at the top for about seven seconds. And when that little black dot starts flashing, you know that you're in scan mode and the radio just scans through the channels. Now, again, I've got this set on time. And so now it picked up a carrier there. It's gonna linger on channel 38 uh, for a while. Um, and then it'll continue scanning. There you go. Uh, to change the direction of scanning, a short press on the top will cause it to scan the other direction, and then a tap on the push to top will take it out of scan mode. So there you have it. That's the power on operation of the CS47. Microphone controls allow you to mount the radio in a convenient place while not cluttering up your vehicle's dash. Since the radio is only a 4 watt rig with less than a 2 amp draw when transmitting, you could easily plug this into a DC socket in your car or truck and not worry about more complicated wiring schemes. The small size of the radio allows easy power connection using one of the two basic methods. Let's do a quick look at each. The first method is to mount a 12 volt plug to the end of the radio's power lead. These plugs are available on Amazon for about $6. You can either use a crimp connection or solder the ends together. Using this method, you simply plug the radio into a 12 volt accessory port in your vehicle and you're good to go. This radio, as I said, pulls less than two amps when transmitting, so a socket on any modern vehicle will work. You may want to check your owner's manual to see if the socket is switched or not. Here's the radio in the console of my F-150. The socket remains live for about 75 minutes after turning off the vehicle and then goes dead. The second method is to use what's called an add a fuse device. Here's a picture of one. Note that they come in various sizes to fit your car's fuse block sockets, so be sure to check what size you need. 
With an Adifuse, you remove the fuse from the fuse block and plug in the Adifuse. The fuse you remove goes in the socket closest to the pins, and a fuse for the radio goes into the remaining socket. It's pretty easy. Your radio's red wire connects to the Adifuse red wire, and the radio's black wire should be connected to any heavy metal screw or bolt that mounts to the vehicle's frame. That ensures the ground is made and the circuit is complete. In this photo, you'll see an Adifuse in my F-150 that I use for my dash cam. As with the 12 volt plug method, I chose a fuse on a switch circuit so my camera goes off when I turn off my truck. Again, check your vehicle's owner's manual. And so now we've got it turned on and you can see the, uh, uh, the display is easy to read from uh, the driver's position and the microphone and all the controls are easily within reach. So that's just one of the ways you can mount this little radio in your vehicle. So that guy's calling in from the west coast of Canada, so this would be an example of Skip. So, what do you think? If you're a road warrior of some kind and a CB radio will be a handy communications tool, this little transceiver is pretty nice. If you'd like to learn more about a nice GMRS mobile receiver from Radioddity, join me over here. Well, that's it. As always, please smash the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.